Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. This one is entitled Oldsmobile. I know it says Oldsmobile, but it's Oldsmobile. There was a car brand. Still is a car brand? Not anymore. Oldsmobile. I never quite understood that name either. Why did you want to call your car Olds? Or Old? Especially if it's new. But yet, it was a popular car. Um, made a lot of grandpa-type cars, especially toward the 80s. And Yeah. In the previous episode of Old War Stories with Uncle Jay, Lansing Lancer, we spoke about the Whiff's first car, her 85 Dodge Lancer. Well, that thing blew up. Big surprise there. Um, she needed another car and fast. So her dad asked around at work and boy he found one. Yeah this was something like a $900 car. This would have been 99, 2000 something maybe. This car didn't last long. Um, I think 900 was been pricey for it. It was a 1986 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Brougham Edition. That was the Brougham, 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 Brougham type edition. One of those. Um, nothing special. You had to see that word Brougham everywhere in the car. They put that on everything. This car had a door pull, like a strap on the door that you could pull it, but it also had the thing like a normal car does that you can close the door with. So you had two places you could pull. Maybe that was a brome thing, I don't know. Maroon interior, white exterior. Paint beat to shit, there wasn't a shine on this car anywhere. Wire spoked wire wheel hubcaps with the center cap missing one and as you drive down the road these caps will go clickety clack clickety clack clickety clack it sounded like a horse trotting is what it fucking sounded like clickety clack clickety clack clickety clack <laughs> under the power barn there was the General Motors 2.8 liter 6 cylinder LE2 V6 engine. It had an Edelbroken carburetor. It was carbureted. She went from a fuel injected Dodge to a carbureted Oldsmobile. Car had AC, didn't work. Car had an alarm, didn't work. Car had overdrive, didn't work. Car had a radio, didn't work. Car had seat belts, <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> you can't, you can't, I've never seen a car. In, this would have been, this is a $5 car. Just for the sake of, I physically made a sale to you, is all. This, you couldn't give this car away. This was the pinnacle of why you don't buy General Motors. This car was 14 years old. About nothing on it worked, or worked properly. So let's go over the details here. You get in, you'd start it up, the whiff and carbonators, that doesn't work. So immediately she couldn't get this thing to start. She didn't know when to pump the gas, when to step on it, when not to step on it, if it was warm, 
it was flooded a number of times. It was not primed enough. It, it was, you had to warm it up, otherwise it would stall. It was a fucking mess. Oh, and the engine put out a, you know, a 2.8 liter, pretty, you know, decent-ish engine, six-cylinder, put out a whopping, whew, this is heavy shit now, 112 horsepower. Gas-guzzling motherfucker. It would get up and go when you'd step on it because it had a carbonator. So it would just fucking dump fuel down that thing and it would eat it up. It was only a two-barrel. Uh, and it, w it had an edel broken on it. I don't know what the original was, but it was definitely carbonated. The steering wheel was a tilt steering wheel. So you pull the lever or whatever it was and put it in the position you want, and there it was. And then you could take the entire steering wheel and go bloop, 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 bloop. It would lock into place. It would stay where you put it. But the whole steering column was fucking moving up and down. The steering wheel wasn't round either. When you turn it, you could see it was like oblong. You know, it was like oval shaped. Quarity. Quarity stuff. It had an alarm that somebody put in it. We connected it. And did we have key fobs? Yeah, we had key fobs, I think, also. We connected it, and then out of nowhere, it just would start going off. And that's why we found why it was disconnected when she got it. <laughs> It didn't work, so that was promptly disconnected after that. Uh, what else? Oh, the speedometer had the old speedometer thing where you would waver at best. So you'd have to guess as we go from 25 to 35, 25 to 35. Maybe you're doing 30. Maybe you're doing 25. Maybe you're doing 35. Might be doing 90. You don't know. It's just going all over the fucking place. And it also <laughs> was improperly calibrated. How do I say? Uh, we tested this out because I had followed her once and I said, you are driving so fucking slow. She said, I'm doing 35, the speed limit here. I said... Not in my car. Huh. So we did a test. And basically the speedometer read 10 miles an hour less than what the car... Uh, 10 miles per hour more than what the car was actually traveling. So if it was 30, that it said she was going 20. The transmission was an overdrive transmission. So you had your standard gears one, two, and three, and then a fourth overdrive. You could put the car into overdrive. It wouldn't overdrive. It would stay in third gear. I started poking around under the hood and lo and behold, I had found a four-pin connector that was unplugged from the transmission. Connector on the transmission, plug sitting right there, not plugged in. Could it be that simple? I went to plug that in. The engine was hot at the time, and... They put the exhaust manifold right there. And as I reached in there, you can't see the scar really anymore. But I had a scar about right there where that hit the exhaust manifold. That hurt like hell. I plugged the connector in. 
we start driving, get it up to speed. Hey, it was overdrive. Fucking great. Look at that, it works. <laughs> we found out why it was disconnected. That was a common problem with those cars. Uh, if you drove the car normally, you're at a red light on a, you know, like two-lane main road with like a speed limit of 40, 45, something like that. And the light goes green and you just accelerate like a normal person, even faster than that. The car would go first gear, second gear, third gear, overdrive. And you're just driving now in overdrive and getting all of the MPGs that you could possibly get. Didn't add up to much, but it was better than not, right? Mm, not really. Because now, somebody cuts you off, and you want to speed the fuck up to block him in now, because he's stuck behind the car in the other lane. So you go to step on it. So the car downshifts. Has to get out of overdrive and into a lower gear. Third, second. Probably not first at the speed you're going, but... Had to probably get down into second. You'd step on that, and it would go... Gah! You would literally hit your fucking head on the windshield. Boom! It was like somebody rear-ended you. It was insane, the fucking jolt that this car had. You would literally be thrown into the fucking windshield. That's how hard this impact was. And that's why that connector was disconnected. Yeah, you could have just shifted it into drive instead of overdrive and driven it that way, but you'd also have to remember, and then you'd forget, and then you'd end up getting whiplash from the car that nobody hit. That was quality. The radio had a vacuum fluorescent display. That's good. What's not good is it would display in Chinese. That's what the whiff called it. The characters on the radio would get fucked up, like segments would go out, and the radio would become unresponsive. And you couldn't even change the station. So that, that didn't work. Oh, the door pulls? They, they pulled right off the door. Yeah, they did. Uh, metal trim on the door, that just was always loose. Seat belt on the passenger side didn't work. You could, it was like tangled and it wouldn't retract. And I spent the time and I detangled it and it wouldn't retract. And then you'd put it on and you'd try to cinch it up as best you could. But it had like a foot of slop in it. So if the transmission downshifted, you're going through the windshield anyway. The seat belt would take effect about when you're halfway through the windshield. And that's when it would hold you in. That was perfectly safe. Nothing wrong with that. Whiff was over at my parents' house. It was the winter. Couldn't get it started. It was heavily flooded. No idea why. I had to come out in the freezing cold at midnight and try to get this thing to run. I did. And she made it home, but she always had problems with this car. Always, always. Just everything on this car was broken D. The windshield um, defroster in the back didn't work. Just nothing worked. Nothing on this car worked. I don't remember if it had a power antenna. If it did, it didn't work. It was just up all the time. Total fucking train wreck. Total fucking train wreck. That's why I don't buy GM. Oh, well, they had quality control issues in the 80s. <laughs> that car is more solid than the shit they build now. And it was that bad after only 14 years. Wow.
Yeah, that was real quality. The engine ran, ran a lot better than that old Dodge when it ran. It's carbonated. I like that aspect of it. She didn't. The end of that car came in the winter. Um, she had it for maybe a year. That's about it. She was a block and a half from home. Tons of snow, slush, ice, and some bitch ahead of her with no signal, no warning, turned into her driveway. The whiff stepped on the brakes and slid right the fuck into her. It was a minor fender bender. It wasn't anything major. Her dad um, took the car home and he took the dent out uh, the old-fashioned way. He hooked a chain around the fender that got crunched and around a tree and threw it in reverse and just went BOOM! and straightened it back out. It was... The chain, like, cut into it a bit and it was flapping around and it was... It wasn't rubbing on the tire anymore, we'll put it that way. It was in better shape than it was, but she said, I gotta... I gotta get rid of this fucking thing. So that one was junked. I mean, it was it was junked to start with. It was an insult, nine hundred dollars. Maybe it was even more. I can't remember. But whatever it was, it was way too much. Like I said, that's that's a hundred dollar winter beater car. If that, five dollars is the right price for it. Actually, the right price for it is zero. But usually those cars are a bigger mechanical mess. I drove one of those as my first car. It was GM. But we'll leave it there. Um, this thing was garbage. It was funny though because Joe, XJO81X, got his grandmother's car, which was one of the same cars. Oldsmobile. 2.8 V6. It was the LE3, maybe? Engine? Same bullshit fucking thing. And that was fuel injected. Had videos on that car. Oh, and another thing that reminds me had an old throwback Thursday of fixing the power windows on Joe's Oldsmobile. Guess what happened to this one? <laughs> The whiffs. Yep. A couple of years later, I did the same job on that car. It was exactly the same problem. It was a lot faster at it. It went a lot smoother, but it was not a fun job. But I fixed it, and oh, a couple of weeks later, this was kind of fun. Because they decided, oh, well, let's not bring it to the junkyard. Let's, uh... Let's donate it. The car ran. It drove. And we called Heritage for the Blind. They accept old cars for donation and give you a tax write-off. Well, um, we called them and they set up a time. This guy came with the rustiest most beat up, uh, how do we put it, Sanford and Son looking tow truck. This thing, I have never seen a tow truck look in such poor condition. It's almost as if somebody donated this, and it wasn't even a flatbed. It was one of the ones that had the, the big hook on it, and like a boom, and it would pick the front of the car up, and it would roll on its rear wheels. Something like that. It didn't even. It wasn't even a stinger, where that thing would come out and go behind the front tire and clamp onto that. It was like the old school, with the big hook like that that would tow it. This guy could not even get the tow truck to operate. I shit you not. He had to get out jumper cables to connect this thing up. 
to bridge the connection to the motor to make the boom and everything operate. I said, uh, we had put the car on the street, but the way his truck was, I said, you want me to just like drive the car straight up behind you? Oh yeah, uh, that would be a lot easier. Uh, would you mind? And he even said, this thing runs better than this does. That was scary. <laughs> it was probably a GM. Uh, anyway, um, went to Heritage for the Blind, and I think that's a very worthwhile cause. And um, one of my friends, Cody Mackey, is blind. So I have a lot of respect for blind people in that, but uh, apparently we were blinded by the fact that this tax write-off was going to be zero. They claimed the car had no value and they couldn't do anything with it and therefore thank you for your donation. Here's a big fat check of goose eggs. Nothing. They gave nothing for this car. They picked it up for free but you can find other wreckers that will do the same thing. So, uh, they didn't even want the fucking thing. So we got no residual value. It was basically a complete and total waste of money for the entire year or year and change that she had this thing. It was a complete and utter total waste. Such as she got out of that car and into another wonderful GM pile of shit. But that's going to be for the next video. That's going to wrap this one up. I really can't think of anything else with this car besides that it was basically a fucking train wreck that still drove. Yep. So with that, I thank you very much for watching and I really appreciate it. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.